<clears throat> okay, so welcome to your 27th session online. Do you have any question, query, comments before we start with today's session? Um, let's first check. Have you submitted your first submission of assignment five? Or has, have you started looking at your assignment five? Considering it. <laughs> you know that it's due next to, um, next week and there will be no extensions because the marks needs to be finalized for exam so that they can calculate your year mark will be done by then okay others how did you find it is it easy difficult or are you going to start also start <coughs> No, okay, so I'm gonna also I'm also going to do it this evening. Okay. Try the first so, one. Okay. So at least by Saturday, if you are still <clears throat> not sure about certain things, then we can have those discussions. I will be online for an hour. <clears throat> um, because I, I don't think we will have any other activities that we can do because um, after today, we would have covered almost all the exam papers that I have. So if we have covered all of them, then it means we have covered all questions I had. So I can't, I don't want to go and create new questions. And I am going to assume that that will be enough because we did the content and then we did activities and then now we're doing additional activities. So you should practice and then feel comfortable to do your assignment and those who are planning to then you can use the saturday to do your assignment as well to go through your assignment remember don't wait until the due date to submit your assignment guys all right so let's get to it so the first hour that we have we will do chi squared and then the second hour i will keep an eye on the time as well then we will look at a uh, regression so what i want to do is to stop sharing and then share my entire screen again because at the moment i'm not sharing my entire screen <clears throat> So that when we do some activities, I should be able to toggle between. <clears throat> okay, so your first activity. For some reason, okay, it's moving. So we're going to start with chi square. There is your activity. Consider the following table. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? I'll give you some time to to do the activity and then let me know when you're done and you have the answer. And also do it on my side. One, two, three, one, two, three, two, three, by three contingency table. So I'll just add the values. Huh. It looks like it's the same thing that I have here. Hmm. 
Okay. That's the same thing that I have. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? Okay, do you have an answer? Not see. yet. I can yes. only say one, two, and three are still correct. So I'm left with four and five. Okay. Okay, so one, two, three, and for me is correct, so five must be wrong. Yeah, five is wrong because 18.35 lies in the rejection region. It has to be rejected. It, it cannot not be rejected. The other thing I forgot to open is the <clears throat> of the table. Okay. So we need to go to the critical values of chi. Okay. So already I have one person. The others, are you winning? So number one is saying the expected frequency for bias above 45 and medium car, which is, that is the observed. So in order for us to find the expected frequency, we need to go to over 45 or above 45 and medium, which is 39.6. So it means number one is correct. Number two, the observed frequency for under 30. Under 30 and board large car is 34. So that one is also correct. The degrees of freedom, remember degrees of freedom is number of rows minus one times number of columns minus one. How many rows we have? One, two, three rows minus one. How many columns we have? One, two, three columns minus one. So it will be two times two, which is equals to four, which means that is correct, that is correct, and that is correct. The critical value, at alpha of 0 0.05, we need to use the degrees of freedom of 4 and the critical value or the uh, level of significance of 0 0.05. We go to the table. We look for 0 0.05 and the degrees of freedom of 4, where they both meet. That is 9.4. 8, 8, which is correct. And making a decision, we know that this is the critical value region, which is 9,8. Our test statistic, they say it is 18. If it's 18.35, which will fall in the rejection area so we will reject the null hypothesis and the statement says we cannot reject the null hypothesis therefore that is the incorrect statement exercise two calculate the test statistic 
it is a two by two table. So you will go to the two by two table. If you are using Excel. Go to the two by two table and capture the values. So we have yes and no. We have male and female. And ten. And the six. And if I move, if I move this table, I should be getting the same value as they have. And since my values here are not rounded off, I can round them off to two decimals and they should look exactly the same as what they have there so it means I have the right expected values so it means my test statistic which is what they are looking for is that correct and if I look at this it looks like hmm. I have the same as you, Lizzie. I think their answer is maybe a little off. Their number one. It would have probably been number one. Yeah. Only number one is the closest it's one. It's the closest one. So that should be. Because they, they use the rounded off values and on our Excel we're using the calculated values. So, if I would have uh, saved this 9.51, I should get the same answer as they have 25.49. Uh, and this is the importance of rounding off before you get to the final answer 33.51. And I get the same answer as them because of the rounding off. So as you can see there, the test statistic is the same. So since I want to take it back to how I found it, just do and do and do until you go back to your calculations. Okay, so number three, let me leave you to it. Let me not do it because then I give you all the answers when I they are looking for the critical value. But the question is very tricky. It says referring to the table at 5% level of significance, the critical value of the test statistic is That's very confusing, but for me, I will assume that they are looking for the critical value. So if they are looking for the critical value, you just need to say row, number of rows minus one and number of columns minus one. How many rows do you have? How many columns do they have? And then use the rows and the degrees of freedom and your alpha of 0, 0.05 to go find your critical value. Remember, you can post your answer on the chat as well. 
Let's check the chat. The chat is not lighting up, guys. Come on, guys. You are able to chat. To What's the card? So exercise three. I just wanted to just the number the exercise. How many number of rows? There are only two minus one. There are only two columns minus one. Therefore, our degrees of freedom will be one. So going to the table, we're looking for 0, 0, and one. And the answer is 3, comma. It is that one, 3, comma, 8, 4, 1. 3,841. So since this one they used the four decimal table, but it's one in the same. A researcher wanted to test whether the beer is independent of gender and there is your 150 beer drinkers random sample. Null hypothesis, beer preference is independent of gender. Alternative, beer preference is not independent of gender. The chi-squared test statistics is equals to Let's see if you can get it right. It is a, a two by two. See already someone has posted, so I'll just put in the values. It's 20. I'm not going to change the titles. 20 and 40. I think it's a two by three, rather. Oh, and Doug. Oh, I think we did do this. I always see only one of the two. So it's a two by three. So it's a two by three table. So we need to use a two by three table. Okay, so that will be 20, that is 40, and that is 20, and this is a 30, and a 30, and a 10, and the answer is option 5, like S. Etienne has posted on the chat. Okay. Exercise five. Uh, uh This is copied on the wrong on the wrong section. Okay. Ignore that exercise five. We'll do that, those exercises later on. Exercise six. To test if the absence of workers from their job occurs at a higher rate on rainy days than uh, non-rainy days, there is your sample of 400 days taken. A statistician wants to test the independence to infer whether the in incidence is higher on the rainy days. So is rainy day related to independence? Weather and absenteeism, are they independent? Which of the following statement is incorrect? No, correct. Oh, is correct. I'm used to look, seeing incorrect, incorrect, so. Yeah, we're looking for the correct statement.
It is a two by two table. Is it not two by three? The two by two, don't count the totals. It's rainy, no rainy? Yes and no. Oh, I see now. Thanks. You have an answer? Number four is correct. Number four. This one. Five. Five. Let's see on the chat what do you have. Uh, nothing posted on the chat. Oh, uh, exercise six, four, four. So you say it's number four. So let's see. We're looking for the correct one. There is two rows, two columns. Two minus one is one. Two minus one is one. So one times one is one. So the degrees of freedom cannot be four. So number one is in incorrect observed value for non rainy and absence non rain and absence it's 100 they it says 103 so it is incorrect the expected we calculated the expected for rainy rainy and absence which is yes at five it should be 8.491, so that one is incorrect. The critical value at 1%, we go to the critical value. We're looking for 0, 0,01 at 1% and 1. So the answer should be 6.3, 6 6.635, 6 6.3 and that is the correct one. And H naught, which is the null hypothesis, it says independent, it should, it says dependent, it should say independent. So that is incorrect. Okay. Seven. I think this we did do. I'm not sure. Can't remember. <clears throat> it is a three by three. And at the values fifteen, twenty one.
Lizzie. Mm-hmm. What is the, uh, so the, the your answer is probably going to be uh, your response will be the answer for this. What do you do when the the rejection or the critical value falls exactly on the same spot uh, of your graph as the um, what's the word I'm looking for? The test. Uh, your critical value. Yeah. Like when, because when we, oh, sorry. When we do the critical value, mm-hmm. we say when it's greater Reject. than. We say greater when, than, uh, only greater than. When it's greater than, when it's more than, because if it falls here, usually to that side, okay. we do not reject. So if it's less than or equal, then we will not reject. You do not reject. Yes. Donkey. Are we winning? Leaning towards number three. Leaning towards number three. Because they're looking for the incorrect one. Number one, number two is correct. Number four is correct. Number five, it says, sorry about the spreadsheet that is on top, can minimize it. We can conclude that the mode of transport is independent. So it means we are not rejecting the null hypothesis. So we do not reject. So it falls this side. Okay, so let's see. Do you have answers on the chat before I give you my answers? Let's see, let's see. Only one person answered, said number five is the incorrect one. So let's look at them. Number one, H naught should always state independent. So number one is correct. H1 should stay dependent. Number two is correct. Number four, I'm going to skip number three because someone says they are leaning towards that one. I will go to number four because I also can see that the sign they, they, that they put there is incorrect. Uh, number four, it says the test statistic is 6.29 which is correct so number four is correct now <clears throat> number if my test statistic is that i need to go find my region of rejection which is my critical value how many number of rows there are three so it means three minus one will be equals to two how many number of columns there are three minus one, they are equals to four. Ah, they are equals to two. So two times two is four. So it means I'm going to use my alpha of 0, 0,05 because they gave me the, I need to go look on the critical value table, 0, 0,05 and four. And I think we did look for that. 0, 0,05 and 4 is 
0.88. So if that is my critical value at 5%, oh, actually I don't even, even have to draw another graph because I have a graph here. So we know that our critical value is 9,488. Our test statistic is 9.6, so it falls in there. Do not reject. So this says we can conclude that the mode of transport is independent, which is correct because we're not rejecting since our critical value falls in the do not reject area. So the only incorrect answer here is that because of this sign, mainly because of that sign, because the sign says, if my test statistic, chi-squared, if it's greater than, then we reject the null hypothesis. So it says, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. If my calculated test statistic is less than my critical value of 9,5, of which if it's less, we do not reject. Anything that falls this side, do not reject. Anything that falls here, we reject the null hypothesis. So only number three is incorrect. Complete the table, then answer which one is incorrect. So I can also mess up the tables so we can use number two by two. I have 265. Uh, and I have 950, and then you can use this to calculate the values. So we say 950 minus 265, and that is the value we're looking for. And we are also given, I can just remove all of this, We are given the total here, which is 700, and we are also given the total here, which is 1000. And in order for me to find this, I'll just say 1000 minus 950 should calculate. And this one. It's 1,000 minus, sometimes you might be, you might be unable to click on a value because of the highlighted field, so it's fine. Since I know that my field is O, and I can just go and type there on the thingy, O, and it's on row 7, and it should not O, yeah, not O. I'm looking for P. Minus P. P, because that's the column that I'm looking for, this one. And to get that value, 300 minus 265. To get this value, I can use 50 and 35, or I can use 700 and 685 and my whole table is calculated i think our answer is option four we're looking for the correct answer so number one is that that is not correct because number one it should state independent. Number two, the observed frequency for acceptable 
an employee, John, which is that value there. It's 685. It is 685. So that is 665. It's not correct. The, oh, the expected frequency for acceptable and employee, Peter, acceptable and for so for the expected value for 265 is 285 so that is 265 that is incorrect because it is this value here our degrees of freedom there are two rows two columns two minus one is one two minus one is one one times one is one so our correct answer is nine Number five, suppose the calculated test statistic is 40. So instead of using the one that they gave us, they say let's use 40 at 5%. So we need to use 5 and 1 degrees of freedom and 5%. Go to the table. And that is 3,841. Three comma eight four one. Forty false in the in the rejection area. So that it will be we reject the null hypothesis and this says not. So that is incorrect. So the only correct answer here is number four. To perform chi-square test of independence, you require two or more nominal variables. The distribution to be negatively skewed, the degrees of freedom, the level of significance, a test of contingency table. I think this we did discuss. No, it was a horrible question. I still don't like it. <laughs> Yeah, I remember that. So we did discuss that. We need a contingency table in order for us to test the chi-square for independence. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? So you have a two by three table. Let me also go and complete it. A two by three table. Values are too big. I will quickly go and populate. And five one five. In four, eight, five, three, fifty. And you guys are busy. I will also play around. Which is C, which is P, and which is S. When you're done, you'll just move your, your Excel a little, man. Right? When you're finished. Tom. Oh, yes, I am done, actually. Let me minimize it. OK. Number four. Number four. Okay. Let's look at the answers. 
Okay. So I mean, I have to toggle between the two. The expected frequency for social media and politician is for 700. So it's on the second column. It's 791. 791.4, which means this is correct. The expected of traditional media and sports star is 450. That's the last color. So it is 163.75. Hundred and sixty three point seven six. I think when you round it off, you'll get seven six. So that is correct. Ooh, yeah. Okay. The observed, meaning the values that you were given originally, the observed frequency for traditional and politician is three hundred and fifty. So that is correct. So we know that that is correct. That is correct. That is correct. Number five, the degrees of freedom. We've got two rows, two minus one. We've got three columns, three minus one. So that would be one. That will be two. One times two is two. So that is correct. That will be the incorrect one because null hypothesis should state independent. Independent, yeah. Okay, so on this one, all what they want you to do is go and validate. We know what the, the degrees of freedom is. So the degrees of freedom, we calculated it previously. That is your degrees of freedom. It's two. Né? We know that. So use the degrees of freedom of two and 10% and check if that value is correct. The critical value is correct. Do the same for 5%, 2.5 and 1%. Remember, we're looking for the incorrect one. So you just need to go to the critical value table and do your answers from there. So open up your critical value table and you just use your two and a range of all those critical values by using 10%. 5%, 0 0.25, and 1%, and validate if those answers are correct. Or as the level of significance, which is your alpha value, when it decreases, the critical values decreases as well. So it means if your level of, when the level of, or oh, the, the level of significance decreases, thus your critical value also decreases. So option five as well for this one. Option five is the incorrect one. Yes. So if we open the table, come on. Just want to make it smaller. So we know that it's the second row, ne? It is that row that we're looking for, the second row. So if I put it here, line number two, uh, for 10% is 0. It's correct because it's 4,60. And 5% is 5,9. Sorry, let's do this. That is the answer for number one. Answer for number two. Answer for number three. They are the same. And answer for number four. That is correct. If you look at this, when the thingy, uh, when not increase, when they when it decreases, so when it moves down, so when it moves there, 
the values of your critical values are increasing. So when your alpha value are getting smaller and smaller, your critical values are getting bigger and bigger. So when they decrease, it should say they are there is an increase in the critical value. So that will be the incorrect one. Next one is to calculate the test statistic. So do this. So I already populated the values. So there are 4,000 years. So the value of your test statistic, it's option. So, option number four. So actually the Excel spreadsheet has, helps a lot to you, especially when you don't have to do the long calculation. So please remember if, for example, in the exam they ask you, what is the formula to calculate a chi-square test? Please don't disappoint me that you don't know the formula. Remember to calculate your test stat. We use chi-square stat of the sum of your observed minus your expected squared divided by your expected. Also, you must know how to substitute this because you need to know that you need to substitute the observed value minus the expected value squared uh, divided by the expected value plus the next value plus the next value. Because if they give you uh, questions where they already did your, your summations and they say select which one is the correct option, Wait, if Let's say 1,800 minus 1,722, 1,800 minus 1,722 point whatever the decimals. You need to know that this is how you write it. Point the decimals plus and we need to go to the next one. Uh, 7791. 700 minus, not plus, minus 791 point the decimals because I don't remember all the decimals that are there. Squared divide by 791 point the decimals plus. You need to know how to identify the formula and how to substitute them. Don't just rely on the Excel spreadsheet, the shortcuts. There are still other questions that they can ask you. How to calculate the expected frequency? You need to know how to calculate it in, stay, in, in case they ask you about the formula. So you just need to know that is the row total times the column total divided by the grand total. You need to know those things. We'll tell them to press F2 on the Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you need to know them. So, because I know that I've, I'm, I'm giving you all this, or oh, we uh, like all these shortcuts and easy way of doing things and calculation to save time. But sometimes they don't just ask you for the calculations. They can ask you or give you options like formulas, and then you need to know how to use the formula. Okay. Fourteen. Given the same statement, uh, the same table, consider the following statements. So, since we have used the data and calculated some of the things, it's easy. It's easy to to answer the question. Uh, the challenge here is they didn't give the level of significance. 
how will you answer the question without the level of significance? So, let's go back to the previous one because they are all linked. So if I look at this, so the previous one, I know what the test statistic is, is 58. And for all the level of significance that they provided here, we can use any one of them, regardless, because you can see that the values are small né? for all of them. We can even take the highest one. Let's say it's for 1%. Let's say our our first is 0, 0,01. Therefore, our critical value of alpha and the degrees of freedom is 9 point. What did we find? 9.210. 9 so if that is our critical value, then we need to consider these statements, all these statements that are here. So let's draw. and select our critical value which is 9.210 and we know that our test statistic was 58.6 where does our test statistic will fall in the rejection area so now if we know all that information consider the statements below we reject the null hypothesis we do not reject the null hypothesis Media platform and personality are independent. Which statements or statement are correct? Which A and C. Correct. Remember the null hypothesis states independent. The alternative state dependent where does 58.66 lie in the rejection area so we reject the null hypothesis and if we reject the null hypothesis therefore this statement no longer it oh um, uh, we no longer consider that statement so the only statement that is valid will be that both of them are dependent so it means social media and uh, media uh, and personality uh, are dependent on one another so based on that it means this one c is incorrect we do not reject the null hypothesis, but we are rejecting the null hypothesis. The only statement that is correct in this instance is only A. So your answer is option one. It's A. Lizzie, sorry, please just, uh, just explain again why was option C not valid? I thought if you rejected the null hypothesis, it is automatically means it's independent, not dependent. No, because if I'm rejecting the null hypothesis, I'm saying the null hypothesis is not true because I'm rejecting uh -oh. it. If I'm not rejecting it, it means I'm accepting it. I'm saying it, it is true. Okay. Oh. You know when 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 somebody proposes to you and you reject them, do you marry them because they rejected you? You don't. Then it means they are no longer there. So you take the statement as that. So when you say you reject the null hypothesis, therefore you say you are rejecting that person. You know you don't want that person to be in your life. So C would have been a valid option if it said or dependent. So if we were, if let's say the answer that we got was 5.5.6, the chi-square test statistics, so we would be in the do not reject the null hypothesis. Therefore, it means the null hypothesis will be valid. 
and that is why most of the time when we when we do not reject the null hypothesis so when we do not reject the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis says independent and the alternative says they are depend dependent when we do not reject do not reject the null hypothesis we say there is no sufficient evidence to show that the two um, uh, the uh, media person uh, media platform and personality are related that's how we say it it's because now we say this statement is no longer valid we then accept that they are depend they are independent confused so we say there is no sufficient evidence to show that media platform and personality are related therefore it means this statement is no longer valid or we could have said it because in statistical manner we say it in that manner in the layman's term we can just say we do not reject the null hypothesis because fake news media platform and personality are independent that would have been a straightforward answer not a statistical answer that is if we do not reject the null hypothesis because then the null hypothesis is true and here we committing a type 1 error we're not rejecting the true null hypothesis because it is true it is what the researcher wanted to prove because the researcher wanted to prove that media personality and media platform and personality are independent okay we left with one minute for doing chi-square questions but i think this there are not a lot of them that you can also do on your own i think there are about let's see three questions which are related one after the other so we can look at the first one what is the value of the test statistic and the critical value so we we have two answers for the test statistic and we have different uh, critical values so we can calculate the test statistic quickly because we it, it is a three by what is a table it's a three by two so we need a three by two Let's see if I have a three by two. That's the last one. It's a three by two. So since it's a three by two, we can just put the values. 90, 45, 90, 45, 90, 45, 15, 15, and 10. Boys and girls boys and girls i'm just passing time so that you can also do on your side the questions the thing i got number four st so when you have time you can do you can do it that way so you can change the variable names or the the data names so we know that our test statistic is zero so it means 
none of those at the top will be valid. So those ones will be incorrect. So we just need to validate only those two. So this is three minus one and a two minus one because there are two columns. So we'll have two and a one. So two times our degrees of freedom is equals to two. We were told that we need to look at our level of alpha of 0 0.05. So 0 0.05 and 2 is 5.991. So that is option number 4. Because that's what we get. Remember, it's second row, that's 1 and 2. So that will be the answer that we are looking for. What will be the decision with regards to the hypothesis and the conclusion about the two variables? Based on the information. Hi, Mrs. Hi. Well, it's 8. What about 8? You said at eight, eight you will start the regression. Yes, we will start the regression. Okay. Just now. Okay. Yes. Okay. So you take these two values that you have, you go make the decision, and then you choose whichever one is correct. Then the next step, oh, sorry. Then, then once you got the answer, then that will be or you just need to know how to make the, um, or choose the correct statement. You can just use a table, a thingy. We know what the critical value is, is 5,991. Our test statistic will fall in the site. So it falls in there, do not reject. So if this is not correct, that is not correct, that is not correct. The only two statements left to choose will be number three and number four. Which one is correct between the two? Option three. Option three will be the correct statement because option three states we do not reject the null hypothesis like with the uh, discussion that we just had we do not reject the null hypothesis so because the null hypothesis is true we can conclude that the specialist type and gender of children are independent of each other so that would be incorrect and that is chi-square tests. So let's move since someone already looking is looking forward to the regression. Let's get to the regression questions. A sample of eight observations of the variable X and Y are given, and they also gave you the summation values. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? The coefficient of correlation is negative 0 0.9 and the coefficient of determination is positive and the best line fit is that there is a strong negative relationship between X and Y. Estimate the results in connection to the above X and Y. Are oh, the estimated results in connection with the above variables, X and Y, are reliable. So now you need, you, you can, you can either use the summations manually and calculate your, your regression questions, or you can just use your template. You can use your template as provided to 
answer the question. So remember, your X and Y, you just need to count how many variables you have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have six here. I need to add two more. So you just hover on the two above the total and highlight them. Insert the two columns and say down and then start capturing your data. Five. And you can do the X first by pressing five, enter. Three, enter. See, I'm saying three and then I put five. Three, enter. Seven, enter. Nine, enter. Two, enter. Four, enter. Six, enter. And eight. Enter and then I go back to the Y. 20. Twenty-three. And remember when you enter the data, you must make sure that the X and Y values correspond with one another. Nine and eleven. Twenty-seven. Twenty-one. Seven. And 14. And just to double check my values, x squared is 284. I do get 284. y squared is 2930. I do get the same. x and y is 700. So I get the same values. So once you have captured all your values, uh, then you can just scroll to the left or to the right. And there are your values that you can use. And you can just choose which one is incorrect. So, <clears throat> so looking at the answers. The first one, it says coefficient of correlation, which is R is negative 0 0.99, which is correct because our R, if I can make my values bigger so that you can see. So your R is negative 0 0.99, so therefore this is correct. Number two, coefficient of determination is positive. Anyway, because coefficient of determination is R squared. If you have a negative response of R, if your R is negative, if you square the negative value, it will become positive. So your R squared will always be positive. The best line, so on the Excel sheet, already you do have the best line there. So my one, uh, not my one. This should correspond to the one that they have here. So if not, then it means this one that they have here, it's incorrect. So they have y hat is equals to minus 2, uh, minus 2.119, which should be the slope. Uh, that should be next to the x. So this is incorrect. So we already know which one is incorrect. There is a very strong negative linear relationship and we could see it from the R that is true. And the estimated connection of the, the R reliable because of the R, you can just say they are reliable. And that's how you will answer the questions. So let me give you some time to also answer the following questions. calculate the coefficient of correlation. So if you're using the Excel sheet, also similar thing. So since here yeah, they only have two, one, two, three, four, five values. And here yeah, we already have eight values. All you can do is go on the big column and delete three of this. 
let's say delete I click and say up and then it will take you up and you just capture the values 18 20 20 Five. And five. And five. And five. And we're looking for R. Option five. For some reason, I cannot. Oh, there we go. So our R is if I I want the same decimals. They have got four decimals. I can also take it to the four decimals. And those are the four decimals. Zero comma eight nine two. Okay. Zero comma eight two three. And I guess this is also based on the rounding off too quickly of some values before you get to the final answer. And that is option number five. If I look at the values, they match exactly the same. The summation values, they match exactly the same as the values on the table. Let me give you some time. Must... Let me know. I will look at the chat also to see. if you have responded to the question. So this is exercise.
Are we winning? Let's see. Okay. It says option four. I didn't capture the data. Something is scratching with this one. If I look at, if I look at, uh, Lizzie, maybe you want to capture the data because that option one, according to what I'm seeing in the Excel and what they've got there is also wrong. Okay, let's let me. But it could be it data. could be the commas or something in the Excel. I'm not sure. Okay, so how many they have? They have. Uh, There's ten. 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 So you, I'm gonna start there. Okay. So you, you just you, need to you. Liz, can I show you what I did with my Excel? I clicked on your row eight. I clicked on row eight and I inserted from row eight. Row eight itself. Click on row eight. Row, row right eight. Click, if you right click on the row and you just say insert. Then it moves everything down. Then you don't lose the formatting and things like that. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to do it that way. Okay. Well. Okay, I just want to make sure that this table stays as is and not get the blue area in order for me not to mess around with the blue area. Uh, let's do undo because this blue area is very important if you mess up the calculations there you need to redo realign all the calculations so since we are adding five you just click on the b and you just insert down uh i guess the way i have done it i've just complicated the whole the whole thing so but anyway insert down I'm hoping that there will be enough rows. Let's see, 68, 39, 42, 41, 53, 40, 48, and 60. Okay, let's do the same with the Y, 140, 23, 161, you just highlight them and drag the values and you should update the whole table so number then i must go to the blue area because all the questions the answers i need are on the blue area i need to go So the first one says the mean of X is 47.5. So the mean of X there is 47.5. Uh, I see where I went wrong. Okay, thank you. I was looking at the wrong area. So then number one is fine. Yes. The mean of Y is 202.5, which is correct. The slope, and I think I also did Put the description of what is what they so you should be able to see uh, the name the labels the slope or in terms of the symbol because I think in the beginning I used the symbol so the slope is b1 which is correct the y intercept is your b0 which is 2.51 which is correct the formula as well should be correct. Let's see the formula. It's incorrect because they swapped your intercept and your slope around. So the incorrect, the incorrect one here is the regression line. 
and here it says the there is a positive relationship. We can just look at the slope. The slope has a positive uh, slope. So, and if we also look at the regression, we can see that the regression is also positive. So, that is also correct. So, correct, 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 incorrect, correct. Now, here yeah, they didn't give you the table. You need to calculate the coefficient of determination. What they gave you is SSR, but they didn't give you SST because your formula, if we use R squared, is SSR divided by SST. So since they didn't give us that, there are other ways of calculating SST or uh, let's not say SST, let's say, let's calculate the regression because that will be easier. Let me show you on the thing, on this table, I'm gonna go up because you will receive this table uh, when you go write the exam. Then they will tell you what SST, SSR are. So you don't have to go and think about that because they would have given it to you. Or they will tell you what SST is here. <clears throat> so they have given you the SSR. You just need the SST, which is just the summation of your Y squared minus the sum of your Y squared divided by N. So we just use that formula. So we know that R squared is SS, R SST, so we just need to calculate SST, which says the summation of Y squared minus the summation of Y squared divided by N. Just substitute the value. Y squared is 1805. Zero five zero minus the summation of y three twenty squared divided by n of six and the answer I type my my calculator is expiring in seven days so after this, I won't be able to show you how to do the calculations. All right. Uh, so we have 1,000, uh, 18,050 minus fraction 320 squared divide by six and that gives us nine eight three nine eight three point three I'm just gonna put it like that because that refers to three 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 is equals to our SSR they said it's nine Four, three, six. I'm not sure if this is a decimal there because with the past exam paper sesh, it's very difficult to know what the values are. I think it's a decimal, so I'm just going to put the decimal six, five. Nine two. So since they kept four decimals, I'm also going to keep four decimals on the one below, which is nine eight three point one two three four. So go get my calculator again. Okay. So we have. Nine four three point 
3.3333 and the answer is 96 0.96 if we round it up to two decimal 0.96 so which is option number one So you also just need to know how to use your formulas as well because you will never know so the formulas will be given to you so the same table the same document you will get before you go write the exam or on the day of the exam i don't know how the, your lecture will want to distribute it but those are the formulas that you can also rely on and use. Okay, go to the next question. <clears throat> okay. I'm sorry. Come on. You have the data. If this is the regression line, which one of the following statement is incorrect? So the, here they are actually not expecting you to do any calculations because they gave you the regression line. Easy to calculate the rest of them. So here they say if x is 8, so you just substitute the value of x with 8 and calculate the value of y. They are asking you if this is the correct value for the slope and this is the correct value for the intercept. That's all what they are asking. So don't try and go to the tape, to the Excel sheet. Okay, so let's answer the question. Is number one correct? No. Number one is not correct because our independent is our X variable. Therefore, our Y variable is our dependent variable. Is number, therefore, it means also number two will be incorrect. Number three, when x is eight, so you just come here and substitute the value of eight. Is that correct? So you just go to your calculator and calculate 1.66 plus 0.93 into bracket eight, close bracket. Is that correct? That is correct. Oh, gosh. Uh -huh. That is correct, and that is what we're looking for, the correct one. The slope, if you go back, and if you understand your regression line, you must always know that your slope is the value next to the x. This is the slope, and this is the intercept. So that is incorrect, that is incorrect. You will just need to remember that, that the slope is the value next to the x. The slope multiplies with the x. The intercept state stands on its own. Next exercise. Now you can go and use your Excel instead of using the summation. But remember in the exam, if they didn't give you the table, because this is very important, if they don't give you the table, then you need to know how to use your summations. 
to answer the questions. So here you need to go to the Excel because they gave you the table, which makes life easier. And since I added 10 values and I need to take away some of the the values because here we have Here we have one, two, three, four, five. So I need to take away the five that I added. One, two, three, four, five. So I can take away from here to the just delete. So I have five. So the count also will tell me if I am having more than I'm supposed to. So let's capture the data. Let's just make this bigger. We have four, six. So I clicked on the screen. Eight, nine, and twelve. And do the same. Twelve, twenty-five, twenty, and thirty-nine. And then you can answer the questions. Let's just double check if my values, my summations, are adding up. X is thirty-nine. Y is 132, X and Y is 10, 1082, X squared is 341. So as long as I'm adding up on those ones, then it means my calculations are fine. So I just want to go up so I can get my correlation. So this is the slope. This is the mean of x, mean of y, the intercept, and, and correlation. I'm just retyping them because they, the titles are on the site and you can't see them right now. Oh, come on. I'm just going to check what this was. So this one says the coefficient of determination. There is also the coefficient of determination here I follow calculated on Excel if in case you want to know what that is. Sorry about that. Not sure if you are able to see all the values. This is exercise six. Exercise six. So la lady says option three is almost correct. So let's see the intercept V0 is minus three. We're looking for the correct answer. So that should be 3.2 minus 
two, three, and option two, it says the slope, there is the slope, it should say 3.5, so they swapped the slope and the intercept around the regression line is, why are you saying it's almost correct? Because the regression line is correct, so you can see, it's just the the value. Yeah, the, after, the, yeah, the, the decimal off. point, yeah, it's yes. rounded off yeah, incorrectly. Because of the round, yeah, because of the rounding off, it will take it away from, because if you do calculations manually and you round off quickly, by dropping off decimals every time you're dropping off important decimals or sometimes you're adding up important decimals together so it will depend on how you also round off so that is minus so the intercept it's minus three point something plus the slope of three point five five four which is correct this is the correct uh, regression line. As you can see, it matches like with that one. Um, but then we have two, or maybe probably you are right because we we have, no, uh, I think the decimal is just, yeah, a coincidence there as well. And then the next one says the coefficient of correlation is 0 0.99. It is correct, but the coefficient of determination should be 0 0.98. So that is incorrect. And if X is 10, remember here on your spreadsheet, if you have downloaded it, you can just go and replace the last value with 10. And press enter and that is 32. Two, that should be 35 that it says 35 it should be 32 so this is the correct answer so this one easy i'm just i'm not going to do it for you answer this one it says if you're given the least square of that much estimate what the value of the productivity will be if the dexterity score is 15. So just substitute 15 on there and let me know what you get. So if it's 64.2, therefore it means what Slalady has done was to, oh, come on calculator, work with me, to say 19.2 plus three times 50, close bracket, and 64.2 and that's how we got the answer as just to cut you off here can we go back to the previous section i think it's the first uh, answer that's correct not the third one Uh, what are you referring to? The intercept should be negative. There it says the intercept is 3.4 and it's positive. It should be negative 3.2. If I just look at the two decimal, the first two decimals, like the first, de actually the first decimal. So the intercept, which is B0, should be negative and here on your response is positive regardless of whether the values here are like that or like that but it should be negative oh, okay thank you which one of the following statement is incorrect if r 
is equals to 86 percent or 0 0.86 it implies that the relationship between two variable examined is strong enough if r squared is equals to 0 0.7 it implies that 70 percent of the variation in y is explained by the regression line number three if the coefficient of correlation r is highly negative it cannot be reliable Number four, if R is equal to 0, 0,64, then R squared is equal to 0, 0,4096. Number five, R indicates the strength and the direction of a relationship. Let me give you some time to think about it. Are you done thinking? Yeah. Okay, so let's go step uh, statement by statement. If R is equal to 0, 0,86, it implies that the relationship between two variables is strong enough. Is that correct or incorrect? We're looking for the incorrect statement. Is this true? Yes, 0, that's 0.8 true. means that's strong true. relationship. That's true. If it if R squared of 0 0.7 implies that 70% of the variation in Y in Y is explained by the regression line. Is that true? True. That is true. If the coefficient of correlation R is if, if R is highly negative, it cannot be reliable. I, that doesn't make sense. It's wrong. It is it's wrong. Incorrect. It is incorrect. Only when it's close to zero, it cannot be reliable because there is no relationship between that. So that is the incorrect one. So when it's positive or negative, there is still a relationship. So we can still rely on that to use the model to model to um, to find the value of of y. To use the x value to find the value of our de in our dependent variable. So the only this one is incorrect. If R is 0, 0.64, R squared is 0, 0.4096. So you just go to your calculator and put the 0, 0.64 and then put the X squared button and see if the answer that you get out there is the same. So let's go 6.4 squared equals 0 0.9, 0 0.4096 which is correct. R indicates the strength and the direction of a relationship. That's correct. That's the definition that we use as well in the notes. Given the test grade and the supervisor grade, determine the equation of your regression and answer which one which of the statement is incorrect so i'll also go and capture the data while you also capture the data let's do that so there are how many i didn't count one two three four six seven eight there are eight 
values. So I need to scroll to the side so I can see everything on the table. There are eight, so I need to add four values. Insert down. Did I skip one video? No, I added too many. One too many videos. Let's delete one. There should be eight. So I can just double check my values. 51, 58, 393. Oh, because it's not calculating those two values. and x squared is 369. So I have the same values. I can just rely on that. Let's go. Okay, and I can see here we also have an 8. I'm just going to change that value to 8. so that we can answer the questions. Give you time to look at your one. Did you give responses? Uh, Salah so lady says option four is incorrect. Let's see if option four is incorrect. Let's see. I want to move this slightly out. So now my values have shifted because my table is the same, so I don't have to also worry about, about that. Let's see if I can drag it to the side. Okay, so it says the mean of X is 6.375, that's correct. The mean of Y is 7.25, that's correct. Slope uh, is 0, 0.5299, that's correct. The intercept is 3.872, uh, which mine is surrounded. So if I leave it to four decimals, I get the same. And we can do the same here. Yeah. Since we know, so I need to go one new level. Come on. Sorry about that. Just need to drag the. Okay, so. And 
should look exactly the same. And let's see. So since I knew that the slope is correct, the intercept is correct, then the slope is correct. So the intercept low sorry my mind is somewhere else so this is incorrect this number four is incorrect and if we estimate the value of eight we get eight point one 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 we also get eight point one 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 because that is the same so the only option that is incorrect here is option number four. These things can get you dizzy if you're not paying attention. And with the last six minutes, let's see if we can answer this question. Suppose the coefficient of determination R squared value is reported by the researcher to be 49%. That is R squared. Which one of the following statement is correct? So let's go through all the statement and see if they are correct. So what I know is I'm not going to be interested in any statement that does not include the 49%. So I can just assume that is not going to be used. And also that one, I'm not going to use that because it says, suppose that the coefficient of determination R squared to be reported by the researcher is 49%. So all the other values that has other measures that are not 49% are not going to describe the statement. So the first one, so I'm left with only two questions here. So the first one says the explanatory variable explains 49% of the variability in the response variable. That says my X explains my y. The second one says my y explains my x. Which one of these statements are correct? Remember in terms of your r, we did do that the discussion. We say 70% is explained by. So here also you must remember that the total variation in y is explained by the total variation in x. That is the standard. Let's not put the block there, let's put the total. The total variation. So that is how you explain. That's the standard way of explaining coefficient of determination. Which one of those statements is correct? Number one or number two? Number three. Number three. You're saying number three, but number three says the response variable Y explains 49% of variability in X. So number three says X is explained by Y. It's number one. 
So the answer is number one. So you need to be very, very careful when you look at this. Remember your your response variable is your outcome variable is the variable that you want to predict or the variable that you want to look at, to yes. explain, to explain. That's the variable you want to explain or predict. Lizzie, these are agents. They don't get They're tired testing of our me. English. Hmm? These are agents. They're testing our English. <laughs> yeah. They don't get tired of tricks. Yes. So you just need to, to know how to how you define certain things and then how do we interpret it in the layman's term, like in a easy way, something like that. So anyway, that concludes today's session. On Saturday, we can continue with other activities because there are about more activities on here, but you also have your own time to also go through them. If you want to, to check your responses, you can post on the WhatsApp. So there is 11, there is 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, or oh, 20. there are more questions more activities that you can go through and then we can also connect on saturday and go through them and then if we finish within an hour we are done if not we continue we have two hours scheduled anyway and then you should be fine by sunday you should be able to write your your assignment and submit it well in advance And in conclusion of today's session, just to recap on what we discussed last long time ago in terms of the preparation for you to write the exam, because at the moment, we're finalizing all content related activities. So we should be done by this weekend with everything so that when we meet on Wednesday, we are going to look at past exam papers. So on, on Wednesday, we're going to do what I call a brief discussion overview of exam paper we're not going to go into too much detail. We might go into detail, but as a revision type of a thing, we're just going to go through that. On the next couple of, after that, we're going to look at, we're going to do a revision. So I think revision will take us two sessions. We'll do it on Saturday, or maybe we can even start on Wednesday, depending on how quickly I finish that overview of the exam paper. Then on Saturday, the following, we will do revision where we look at the assignment questions. Uh, because we we are asked to discuss the assignment questions and show you how to answer certain questions that were on the assignment in case some of them repeat themselves and you find them in the exam. You should know how to answer those questions. So we'll do revision for the next following two, two or four sessions coming. So it will be the Wednesday and the Saturday sessions. We'll, we'll see how far we get. In the meantime, while we're busy with those revisions, I will upload on my UNISA, on our site, on our, my Twitter site, um, I will upload the um, this will only be for those who are on my my UNISA environment, like on my site. If you're not one of my students on my UNISA, if you're not linked on my site, you will only benefit from what we're going to do via the recordings. 
or when we do the discussions because everything that we're going to do will be on my UNISA. So I will load the mock exam paper, which is not timed. You can do it as many times as you want. You can take as many, you can go back and forth, back and forth, or do whatever you want to do with, but it will be a complete exam paper with the answers, solutions to all the answers. You will get your responses immediately. When you answer the questions, you will, I will make sure that you get the responses immediately with all the activities worked out and how to solve, answer the questions and, and, and with step by step. I will do that um, in the meantime, in the background, while we're still doing the revision. Once you're done with that, uh, and I can see that many students have already completed it, then once we're done with the revision, we're going to go through that exam paper together in one or two sessions. And I will also, in the meantime, uh, after that couple of weeks, I will also give you a timed exam paper, a mock exam, a practice, let me call it practice exam paper also. And this is only for those on my UNISA site so that you can practice and see how you're going to do in the actual exam because your exam is timed. So you need to start practicing that. So probably I might load two papers or one paper. It will depend on the time that I have in creating those because it's time consuming to create the question paper on on my UNISA and also in the meantime also do solutions because I want to make sure that when you do the activities you also get the solutions <clears throat> immediately you get the responses immediately so I will do that but and those will be the format going forward so we do the revision using the assignment and then you need to go and take the mock exam paper and then you have later on before we go and write the exams then you should have an opportunity to write a proper exam a pre preparation exam and there might be one or there might be two depending on the time that i will have that is all for today those who are not in my group, I will try by all means to download the questions and post and 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 put them on uh, on the drive the way where you get all the other notes so that you can also have access to them. But I am not going to put the solutions because then it's it defeats the point. Those who are going through my UNISA, you will get the solution when you answer the question. I'm also not going to, when I upload the questions themselves, I'm not going to give you the answers. So you can only get the answers if you go through my UNISA. <clears throat> I'm not sure if you all understand. Otherwise, the others who are not in my group, I might find a solution for you to also do the test outside of this, but it's a long shot. I am not promising anything. Um, for now, my only uh, concern or my only priority will be those in my group on my UNISA. I need to look after them first. They come first. They are my responsibility. So Lizzie, going forward, does it mean then that there won't be any recordings? We'll have to attend these kind of sessions. No, all the all the sessions will be recorded until you go write the exam. Until we finish, I will we will record all the activities, all the discussions. Okay. All yes, of them will be recorded. The modules. Yeah. Um. They will be recorded because I, you, you also want to go back and when you do your own revision on, at your own time to go yes. through the, the recordings. Yes. All I'm just saying is most of the things will, will be done on my UNISA side. Okay. That, yeah. Okay. I feel very special right now. 
No, you should be. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lizzie. Thank you so much. Okay, so then that concludes today's session.